Hey, what's up guys? This is Jordan from Hardcore Music Studio. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to get slamming metal drums. And it's gonna take your drums from sounding pretty good like this and just add tons of punch and impact. So how we're doing this is using parallel compression. You've probably heard of this on drums and I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do it. But there is a little trick to this that's gonna give you way better results, especially for heavy music. So make sure you check out this whole video to see exactly how it works. So all of my drums, they're routed to my main drum bus right here. You can see they're going out drums, coming in drums on my main drum bus. So here's what my main drum bus sounds like. So pretty good, but I've also got my parallel compression bus, so let's bring that in. Listen to how the kick and snare just pop out. Let me show you what this sounds like on its own. Just mute the reverbs. So the whole idea is that you compress very heavily uh, a duplicate of the drum sounds, the whole kit all together, and then mix that in with the original drum sound because obviously you can't have you know your drums just sounding like this. I mean, it's kind of overhyped, kind of ridiculous, but if you blend it into the normal drum sound, then you start to get all the benefits of that extra punch and impact without kind of the crazy, whooshy, swirly effects of all that compression. All right, so the first step is to set up a separate set of sends to a new bus. So I create my new bus called Crush, and I have, you, know, you can see my first send on the drums here is to my crush bus and basically i set all of these send faders at zero but then i adjust the mix so this is one of the keys to doing this right especially for heavy music is that if you just send the exact same drum mix to the parallel compression track you're going to get a lot of trashy cymbals and maybe too much kick as well so you want to actually basically feed a separate independent drum mix to the parallel compression track so that you can, can control exactly how much of each track, you know, the kick, snare, toms, and cymbals is in there because usually you want to increase uh, the impact of the kick and snare especially and then a little bit of the toms um, but without getting too much of that cymbal wash. So again, here's the parallel compression track by itself. It's mostly kick and snare, right? Let's bypass our plugins so you can hear it just how it is coming into this bus. Okay, so we've taken our normal drum mix, we've turned down the cymbals, the rooms, and we've turned down the kick a little bit too, because sometimes that extra low end can make the compressor pump too much. Okay, so we've got that mix going. First thing we're gonna do is compress. So I like this SSL compressor from Waves, but there's a ton of other options that you can use. A lot, Slate has some good ones. Basically, almost any compressor that will let you do you know, an aggressive pumping sound. So check this out. We're using a 10 to 1 ratio, uh, slowest attack here, which is 30 milliseconds, and the fastest release. So you want to go for a relatively slow attack. Um, well, medium to slow attack, and then a fast release, and you just want to crank it high ratio and get uh, a lot of gain reduction. So check this out. Listen to the transient on the snare. So you're going to turn the compression up until you get that smack on the snare and that attack on the kick. You can sometimes go too far when it kind of starts to take away. I'll show you what I mean. Like to me, I'm kind of losing the snare at that point. It's just like, yeah, I don't know, it's not really gonna work. Back it off a little bit. There we go. So now we're still maintaining the character and the tone of the drums, but we're getting that front end smack that sounds great. I usually follow that up with some sort of uh, saturation or subtle distortion. In this mix, I'm using the Decapitator. It doesn't have to be this. I've used tons of other options before, like Cranesong Phoenix. Uh, a lot of the new Slate uh, saturation plugins within their mix rack are really good as well. I've been using those. In this case, I'm using a little bit of the Decapitator in E mode.
This is just some kind of slight distortion that's adding some edge to the to the attack of the drums. Definitely adding some energy and intensity there. So you've got a compressor, some saturation, and then I usually like to use a clipper just to shave off the extreme peaks that we're getting uh, from this compression and everything. So you won't notice much audible difference here except for watching the meters. They're never gonna go above a certain point. And that allows me not to have too many meter spikes uh, feeding into my overall mix bus that's gonna affect the overall mix compression. This is really just gonna keep the transients contained uh, where I want them to be here. So that's it, this pretty simple chain for the parallel compression track there. Um, and just to show you what I mean about using a separate mix, now what a lot of people would do is just use the exact same drum mix into the parallel compression bus, but let me show you what would happen if I did that. So let's change the input of this track to be the normal drum bus. See how much cymbals are in there? So what's happening is it's the compressor's clamping down on the kick and snare, and then that's, uh, that's making the cymbals in between the hits come up. So it's really emphasizing the cymbals and because the compressor is pumping, it's very washy sounding. Not super pleasant to listen to. So again, let's go back to the other uh, drum mix that I'm feeding it with. Again, with these sends, this is key. Use a separate set of sends into this track so that you can control exactly what's being compressed on your parallel bus. I like to leave a little bit of cymbal in so that you're still getting a little bit of energy added to the cymbals too, but overall it's about kick, snare, and toms. Once you get that all ready, I like to bring back the normal drum mix, put your parallel fader down at zero, and then just start bringing it up. So there you go, that's how you can make your heavy drums slam in any mix. This is a go-to technique I've used for many years. I use it in pretty much every single uh, rock, metal, hardcore mix that I do. Uh, it's just the best way to get a lot of extra slamming impact and punch out of your drums. If you wanna get more tips like this for your rock, hardcore, and metal mixes, then make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel for one thing and turn on your alerts. But the best place to get all of my best mixing and recording tutorials for metal is to subscribe to my email list. And you can do that over at metalrecordingguide.com. You can download a free PDF there when you sign up to the list. And it's gonna tell you the five surprising truths about producing heavy music that slams. These are the five tips I've narrowed down after 10 years of producing major worldwide releases for bands that you probably recognize. And over those 10 years, I came up with these five things that I think will really move the needle and make an impact on your work and help you get closer to uh, doing this, you know, professionally, full time maybe, or just getting more clients, getting better mixes, maybe just, you know, having more satisfaction out of the work you're doing. So that's over at metalrecordingguide.com. Jump on the list, leave me a like or a comment below. Tell me what you thought of this video, and we'll see you next time.